Welcome to the M&A Unplugged podcast. Our mission is to help you be better prepared for your business acquisition or sale. Being prepared will ensure you maximize returns and minimize risks. This is M&A Unplugged with your host, Dominic Rinaldi. Welcome back to M&A Unplugged. I'm your host, Dominic Rinaldi. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic that came up in a discussion I had with a client, a buyer client last week about exclusivity. Uh, And exclusivity, for those of you who don't know, is uh, something that many buyers look to put into an offer, a letter of intent, that simply states that the seller won't consider another offer uh, while they're engaged in due diligence. It is a reasonable ask um, and an owner should be willing to give it. Now they might want to put some caveats on it rather than have it be open-ended, but it's an important, it's an important item of an offer. And I'm going to go through both why from a buyer's perspective, uh, you should be asking for it. And from a seller's perspective, why you should be willing to give it, but maybe put some guardrails around what it is. And so this topic is the first of a a number of topics that I'm going to cover this summer on items that are coming up in my one-on-one consults with various buyers and sellers. Lots of questions, lots of different topics. And so I think I'm gonna take this summer to cover a bunch of these items that that come up uh, in normal course of discussions uh, with my clients. So we're gonna try to do that this summer. These will be on the shorter end. Uh, but hopefully packed with some good information so that uh, you can act on these uh, if you're in the middle of a deal. Last thing I want to mention is uh, we're going to be announcing at the end of the summer some new service offerings uh, specifically geared towards buyers. Uh, And so I'm really excited about these new products and services that we're going to release. So be on the lookout. We'll probably be announcing these uh, later in the summer. As always, uh, really appreciate you being here. And remember that we've got all sorts of free resources available on our website, things that you know can really help you avoid the common pitfalls and mistakes in deals. Uh, so go visit k2advisor.com forward slash resources, k the number two, advise.com forward slash resources. Again, thanks for being here. Hope you enjoy today's show. All right, so as I had talked about in the opening, uh, this topic of exclusivity came up in a discussion that I was having with a buyer uh, client last week. We were doing a quick consult, and the buyer actually didn't understand what exclusivity was. They, They actually thought they would be giving something up rather than gaining something. So I had to do a quick education, and while this may seem like a simple topic, It's really not because understand from a buyer's perspective, owners don't want to give up exclusivity, right? They don't want their their business taken off the market and and to have just a discreet discussion with a buyer, especially if you're, you know, not certain that this is the right deal for you or you're not certain that you can get financing, any number of reasons. You know, sellers don't want to miss what is right now a really crazy hot market. And so it's it's important to have this, but understand that sellers really don't want it. Sellers, please understand that buyers really need it um, because it gives them the confidence to go start spending money to do the deal. So I'm going to go through uh, quickly what buyers should be looking for. And then I'm going to put on my other hat here and take it from a seller's perspective so that everybody understands what both sides are really thinking about. Because if you can understand what the, where the other side is coming from, you're going to have a much better negotiation. You're going to get to a much better place. Unless, of course, there's lots of competition and the sellers dictating the terms. Then, um, unfortunately, there are buyers that will do anything to get a deal and, and then all bets are off. So exclusivity, knowing that you've got the deal under, under lock uh, for at least some period of time is really important. It, it gives you a couple of things. One, 
you know you have the undivided attention of the owner of that business, which is really important, and hopefully the advisors. And you need that. You need to know that they're not splitting their time between helping you get through due diligence after an offer is accepted and uh, fielding uh, other inquiries, maybe having meetings, maybe even soliciting other offers. So knowing that you've got an owner's undivided attention and they're doing all they can to help you get through diligence and see if this is the right deal for you is, is really important. The other reason from a buyer's perspective is this is important is you, you don't wanna start spending money uh, if you have the risk that the deal is going to be taken out from underneath you because another buyer comes along and makes a better offer or whatever it is. And you are going to spend money. Um, now, I always recommend that buyers do some initial diligence themselves uh, before they start bringing in their professionals. But at some point in time, you're going to have to bring in the professionals. You're going to bring in maybe a forensic accountant. You're going to bring in an attorney. You're going to bring in an advisor, maybe, and maybe some specialists. Maybe there's a regulations or HR or OSHA or whatever it is, and you're going to start paying people to help you do this diligence. And the last thing you want to do is start cutting checks only to potentially have the deal uh, fall out from underneath you. So, you know, you want to be, you want to be really careful there. Asking for exclusivity is fine, but it also shouldn't be open-ended. From a buyer's perspective, uh, I find that most times, depending on how you're going to finance the transaction, whether you're, you have a line of credit and you're just going to be drawing against that or you're going to the bank to get a loan, typically 45 to 60 days is a reasonable amount of time to expect that an owner will give you to you know, have a clear shot at doing the deal. Sometimes it may need, you may need a little bit longer if there are some specific things to that deal. One thing that comes to mind is maybe you need to go get vendor approval and, and that may take a little bit longer. So maybe exclusivity becomes 75 days, 90 days, but you know, typically 45 to 60 days should give you enough time to look at a deal and determine whether or not you really want to move forward and do it should give you enough time to get indications from your lender uh, that they're gonna uh, secure a loan for you. So it, it's really, it's a sufficient amount of time in most cases. I will say, if the owner does give you exclusivity terms, if you get to a point in time where you don't think the deal makes any sense, do the owner a favor and terminate the deal quickly. They're gonna wanna get back out to market. They might've had some momentum with other, uh, uh, with other buyers. Give them the opportunity uh, without dragging this out to go bring back those other buyers. So you want to get exclusivity, but uh, be aware that, you know, there's an owner that really wants to trade this deal. And if you're not interested in moving forward, get, get out of the deal as quickly as you can. If there are third party advisors, intermediaries like myself involved in the transaction, they might push back. Uh, they may, they might, might not want to accept exclusivity on behalf of their client because they have a really robust market and it's incredibly competitive out there right now for, uh, for good deals. There's lots of buyers chasing good deals. So in the rare instance, there might be situations where, uh, you know, the, the advisor along with the client don't want to give exclusivity because the market is so crazy. So one of the things that you can do there is maybe reach a, a halfway point with the owner so that they can continue to market the business and not lose out on potential buyers. However, they can't engage in a negotiation with another buyer and respond to any offers uh, until your exclusivity period is over. So sort of an, a, a nice compromise uh, if that deal is getting a lot of traction and the owner and the advisors are pushing back on the concept of, of exclusivity. So you've got some options here. There's some others, and this is where you need a good attorney, a good intermediary to help you get through that. There are, there are a number of other ways to approach this, uh, but those are sort of the basics. Let me switch over now and, and talk about uh, exclusivity from a, from a seller's perspective. Obviously, as an owner of a business, you're, you've reached that point where you're, you've decided you're going to sell the business and you want to get as much 
activity is possible. And the thought of taking your business off the market for some period of time uh, is not all that appealing. If you've been listening to the first part of this, you can understand hopefully from a buyer's perspective why this is important. They're gonna start spending money and, um, and maybe lots of it. And, and so I, I'm usually uh, on the side of a buyer here that you know, an owner should be willing to give the buyer some level of exclusivity. However, I do think that there are some things you can do with the verbiage in a letter of intent that keep the buyer on track so that it's not just blanket exclusivity. They have milestones to meet. So let me be specific here. What you might say is, Mr. Buyer, I'm going to give you 60 days of exclusivity. However, I need to know that you've applied for your loan within five days of signing this LOI. I need to know that you've engaged a forensic accountant within seven days. I need to know you've um, filed your banking application paperwork within 10 days. So there are any number of things that have to happen along the way and should be happening along the way. And um, so you can add what I call modified exclusivity into a letter of intent so that while the buyer has the comfort and knowledge of knowing they have exclusivity, they don't just have this blanket period of time and they can't just drag their feet. They've got to move on uh, uh, in earnest and really uh, do everything they can in good faith to get the deal done as quickly as possible. I find that to be a tremendous compromise um, when owners are, are giving up exclusivity that you just modify it so that everything's following a certain schedule. Now, understand as an owner of a business, there's gonna come a point in time where buyers can't move forward one way or another unless you're delivering information to them. So there's an onus on you that you have to be delivering them information uh, and answering their diligence requests in a timely manner, or they're gonna miss their dates. And then you're just gonna wind up in, you know, you know, with a problem on the deal. So uh, it, it's incumbent upon all parties to move quickly and expeditiously and in good faith. So the, the last thing that, that I'll mention here from a seller's perspective is it, is it is a crazy market right now. There are a lot of buyers looking at great deals. And so every now and then a buyer is going to come along and they're going to waive their exclusivity rights. I would just caution you that uh, if they do, I wouldn't use it as a license to just go out and maybe accept other offers. Um, Use it in a way so that you're smart. Uh, and if you're using an intermediary, I'm going to do that again. And if you're using an intermediary uh, like us to, to help you with the transaction, uh, you can take offers and let them be in a backup position. And you can even state how long they'll be in a backup position, which you know gives the current buyer uh, a, a, a little more pressure to get the deal done and, and to really move uh, as quickly as possible. So I think it's, it's okay to accept deals without exclusivity, but I caution against just kicking buyers out of the process because you've got a better offer. Of course, if it's an incredibly better offer, then you have to do what's best for you. But I, I still think that uh, there's karma in deals and uh, you do things in good faith and, and hopefully uh, it comes back to pay you uh, very well in, in other ways. All right, so hopefully uh, this topic is of help. It's, it's an important one. Um, people overlook it and they'll overlook the intricacies of how you can slice and dice exclusivity. You know, not just give it away on a, on a blanket perspective. And buyers, please understand that, you know, if a seller comes back with modified uh, exclusivity, that's just a, a good way for everybody to keep the deal moving and moving quickly. Hope you enjoyed this topic. We're gonna have a bunch more like this through the summer. All of today's information will be available in the show notes. If you enjoy our content, please remember to subscribe and review our podcast. I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the M&A Unplugged podcast. And until then, please remember that scaling, acquiring, or selling a business takes time, preparation, and the proper knowledge.